Hi, Sally! Hey, Sam. How's it going? Ah, oh, Moses is in the house. And there's Andy. Good job. Good job, guys. Oh, and there's Andy. I think the sound sounds off. Good job. It sounds muffled. I'm going to try this. Unmute. Right. I'm hoping that's going to be better. Is it going to be better? Is it going to be better? That's better. Right. I'm hoping that's going to be. There you go. Loads better. Really weird. Sounds muffled. Every now and again. Yeah. Don't know. Got loads of people in the house. Look at this. This is amazing. Guys, can I say thank you for doing the work yesterday? There are still a few people who haven't submitted, but I know that some people were having difficulty submitting on the classroom. I got, um, just quickly, uh, right, so I'm actually on the classroom right now. Ah, and uh, no, 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 no. Um, I, I can't seem to get back to the classroom. That's irritating. Uh, right, I'll do the register, folks. Oh, don't go to calendar. I just want to go to classroom. Why won't it let me go? Oh, oh, I'm there. Okay, so I'll quickly do the register, get that boxed off. This is where it'd be useful if I could actually just split these guys off. That's a better idea, isn't it? Yeah, you see. I'm getting there. So I've got Harris. Have oh, I still not seen Harris? No Harris yet. First person on the register. Got Rue though. Oh, that's so rubbish. It won't let me do it. Oh, okay. I'll do it this way with this one. All right. Uh, is Harris here? Does anyone see it? There's Harris. Harris is there. I've got Rue. Uh, yeah, got Rue. Got Nick. Where's Nick? There's Nick. Got Ashley, I've seen. Yeah, Shan, I've seen. Anna, is Anna in the house? Haven't seen Anna in a while. Is Anna watching? Does anyone know? Oh, I don't have no idea what I've managed to do here, guys. Uh oh. Um, um. It's got Ashley's name now tagged across my hide. No. Uh oh. Oh, that's weird. <laughs> Clicking stuff that I've never clicked before. Uh, Anna's not here. Has anyone seen Anna? Yeah, if anyone's seen Anna, just quickly let me know. Got Kieran. Yura? Yeah, Yura's here. Amazing. Thanks. Toby? Do we have Toby? Is Toby in the house? Anyone seen Toby? Uh, ben? Is Ben here? I haven't seen Ben either. Where is everybody today? Where's Ben? Oh, this is getting just a nightmare. Tong, I'm pretty sure, is here. Andy's here. Is Vic here? Yep, Victoria's there. Well done. Isabel's here. Ruby? Is Ruby here? No Ruby yet. Oh, there, there's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Fab. Toby is on way, sir. Okay. So I've got loads of people missing. Got Anna, Anna, Toby, Ben. Oh, there's Ben. Ben's in the house. I like it. Ben, amazing. And Ruby. Con and Wenner here. That's amazing. Con and Wenner here. I know that much. Yeah, amazing. So, not okay. Ruby, Anna, and Toby are missing. Ruby, Anna, and Toby. Okay, I'll mark them as missing and then update them later when they show up. Fine. Okay. Save. Right, guys. You guys did a homework for me, which was awesome. I'm going to share my screen with you guys. Uh, but you guys have done a homework. Uh, I know that a couple of people have emailed me directly. I think Toby emailed me directly. I think so. Or Ben? Can't remember. I got a homework come through. Toby. I got Toby's homework uh, on. So 
I don't have to worry about, but there are still people who haven't handed it in yet. Anna's, of course, missing. Kieran, Rue, Shanley, I know I've asked you to do some diagrams, so I know that you're taking a bit longer. And Vic, you guys are missing. Toby has sent me. So only five people missing now. So what I want to do is now, one of the things about doing research work like this is, I'm going to, by the way, I don't want you to edit any of the stuff that you've sent on the classroom. Don't update it. I just want it to be there. Toby's in the house. Thanks very much, Toby. Um, I want you to leave that because I'm just going to do some writing on it just because I was so impressed by you guys. You put in such great effort into the homework and into the lesson yesterday that I was so, so pleased. I'm just going to write some notes on them. Uh, but what we now need to do, um, I stole diagrams from the interweb. <laughs> I love how you put plural into webs. I don't know what kind of webs you're looking at. Dark web. Um, what we now need to do is we now need to convert all of your methods into the one you're going to write down in your exam. So I'm going to share my screen. And then I'm actually, ooh, I'm tempted. Okay, this is going to be a bit of a gamble. I may as well give it a go, though. Um, GCSE past papers, I've only got one. Ugh. I don't ask me why. I don't know why I've only got one. Uh, this is a paper one as well, which means it's not going to have the titration methods on it because the titration is only done in paper two. Um, I'm sure I had more past papers than that. I'm sure I did. Back up. Um, Pen drive, GCSE, IGCSE passed, oh, oh, paper two, 2015. So most papers have got either a salt prep method or a titration method. And I just want to quickly see if which one this one has. Uh, that's an enthalpy change. Let's just see if I can find the long answer. Oh, no, no titration on that one. That's frustrating. I don't think so, anyway. Oh, well. So what we now need to do is we need to take your notes and we need to create the method, the method that you're going to need. And I'm tempted, actually, to read some of these out because some of them were amazing. And it was nice, that I think, that a lot of people went into doing the extra. I loved Titrand and Titrant. I thought that was awesome. So today's lesson, three learning objectives, is know the bullet point. Uh, I'm just, that's no point me putting that. No titration method. No titration method. By the way, if, 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 I'm ha if I have trouble writing, uh, please forgive me. I've had to super glue the tip on my, uh, on my Surface Pro pen because it's snapped in half and I've super glued it back on and I'm, I'm waiting for it just to snap off again. So bear with me on that one if it breaks. Uh, no titration method. Yeah. Um, understand. No, uh, be able to recognize. Yeah. Um, be able to explain. Explain each step. Yeah, why we're doing it. And then... So know the method, be able to explain each step, and understand common problems. Yeah, common problems. So the first thing is, you guys knew all of the stuff. You guys did really, really well. Uh, I'm just suddenly realizing I need my chat window open. There we go. Winner. Uh, oh, let's have a look. Uh, oh, the titration one yesterday, yeah. Uh, yes, the Bing side of the website into OneNote. <laughs> Ouch, I love it. Uh, okay, guys, so question number one, let's see how many of you guys remember what you did yesterday. Yeah, question one is, uh, what is the purpose? What is the purpose? What is the purpose of a titration? What is the purpose of a titration, folks? Most of you had it on your the work that you submitted, which I was really, really pleased with. It's really nice to see that. Yeah, I wonder how many people can remember. Put on the chat, guys, quick as you can. So that's question number one. Question number two. Um, question number two. What indicators, 
what indicators are available available to find the amount of alkali needed to neutralize an acid which shows concentration. <laughs> Determine the concentration of titrand. I love Ashley you using the word titrand. I really love that. You know you don't need that, it's A-level. And even at A-level, they don't tend to use it. To quantitatively determine the concentration of an unknown solution. Tong, perfect. Wow, that's it. I, I love this. You guys using titran and titrant. It's amazing. By the way, I'll give you a little hint on how I remember those two words in a second. Yeah, what indicators are available for, tit for performing titrations? So that's the next question. I'll put your answers because they're great. So the answer is, what is the purpose of, to determine, to determine, oh, set up your pen, no thanks. To determine the concentration, concentration, to, de, to determine concentration, oh no, go on Yorkshire, go on Yorkshire. To determine the concentration of unknown solution, unknown acid or alkali. Concentration of unknown acid or alkali. I like it. So that's simply what it's used for. And by the way, the unknown, just to let you know, is indeed the titrand. Yeah, titrand is the unknown. Yep. Because there's a known and an unknown. Yeah. So, uh, by the way, you, you, you're going to think that I'm super hard. Please do a Thai accent, Mr. Duncan. Ha! I definitely can't do a Thai accent then. But I'll work on it just for you. I'll watch some YouTube videos and see if I can do one. Yeah, I'm happy to try. I really want to learn how to do a Malay accent. Really want to learn how to do that. I'll work on that for you. To quant Shanley, to quantitatively determine the concentration of an unknown solution called a titrand by adding a volume of chemical with a known concentration called a titrand. That's amazing. I love it. So just to explain, and I know you're, you're going to laugh at this. When I got given those words, titrant and titrand, yeah, What I used to do is that. I used to type trant. I used to write my T in a really funny way. And the reason why this helps me is because that one's going in the burette. <laughs> it looks like a mini burette. I know that seems weird. I'm just, just insert a ton of Malay Malaysian slang. Okay, Rue, I'll work on that as well, just for you guys. Yeah. Titrand can do like a, a little lopsided conical flask. Yeah. Titrand. And this one is going in the conical flask. Yeah. The titrand is the one I always used to do. Oh, that's a mini burette. So cute. Lol. It's just, I used to always forget which one went where. And so I come up with these really stupid methods, yeah? And obviously, the one in the burette, the one in the, this is the unknown. The titrand is the unknown, yeah? So that's going in the, in the conical, yeah? And then the titrand is the one that's known, yeah? We know all about that one. So that's the way that I tend to remember it. The flask looks so funny. I know. I actually kind of did it on purpose. I kind of do it like a lopsided one. Like that. Even though I know, you know, it's meant to be like this. Yeah, I just make it look like a D. It just reminded me because what they used, what they do at A level, it's not GCSE, by the way, it's A level. Yeah, what they will say is in a set of instructions, it will say titrate um, so the, the titrant sodium hydroxide with hydrochloric acid, the titrand. And everyone forgets where they go. Everyone's like, um, 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 it's a shoe. That's literally what I was thinking. <laughs> it does look a bit like a shoe. All right. 
All right. Moving on now, since you guys have slammed my way of remembering stuff. Thanks. Right. So what indicator is available for performing a titration? Now, this question's super important because there's an answer which everyone writes down, which is wrong. Yeah. The first one that's available, and well done for everyone trying to spell it properly. Thank you very much. Phenol. I feel like I want to make my pen thicker. Number one. Phenol. Looking for something. Looking for something. I don't know. I need white, but I can't find white anywhere. Oh, black, gray. I'll put it in as gray. Phenol, P-H-T-H-A-E-A-L-E-I-N, phenolphthalein. So that's our first one. Can anyone tell me why I've color coded it like this? Yeah, because it has two colors. It is pink and it is colorless. And the question is, when and where? When is it pink? Yeah, it is pink in versus colorless in, yeah. When is it pink? When is it colorless? On the chat, please. Now, the reason why this is indicator number one is this is go to indicator. This is number one. This is top indicator. Top indicator. Why is it such a good indicator? Pink in excess. Ah, oh, excess what, Isabel? That's the problem. Yeah, and that, by the way, that's naturally not the answer. But I understand what you're saying. You know that you're going from colorless to pink, and it goes pink in excess. Yes, totally correct. Isabel, your answer's good. But excess what? Colorless and acid pink in alkali, Kieran. Well done, Kieran. It is pink in alkali. I always remember this. Yeah, in alkali. Pink in alkali, OH minus. And colorless in acid. Yeah, and colorless in acid, H plus. So when you have an excess of OH minus, it will turn pink. Pink and base, colorless and acid. Spot on, con, well done. Yeah, now, I, by the way, I always link this to another indicator to remember it. Pink is, starts with the same letter as purple, and purple I know from universal indicator being a, being a base, being an alkali. That's the way I tend to do that. I link everything back to universal indicator, and we're gonna mention this in a minute. So why do we love phenol phalene so much? Second question, top indicator. Why is phenolphthalein, P-H-T-H-A-L-E-I-N, why is phenolphthalein such a good indicator? Indicator. Why is it such an indicator, such a good indicator? Oh, no, I've gone Jamaican. Oh, I've ruined it. I'm sorry. I'm not going to do that again. That was terrible. Yeah, why do we love it so much? And this is just common sense. Why do we love to use this? It's because, I wonder if people can tell me on the chat. I'll leave that there for a minute for you guys to have a, have a ponder. Let's list our indicator number two. Indicator number two. Indicator number two is methyl, ooh. <coughs> Gotta be careful now. Yeah, okay. Methyl. I shouldn't do that, I should do, I should, the problem is it, I just, methyl. Methyl orange. Methyl orange. And you'll notice it has three colors. What a nightmare. 
Meath Isle Orange. And before anyone says it, yes, meth is red. <laughs> uh, no one's posted on the chat why we love phenol feeling so much. Why is it such a good indicator? Color change. Color change. Very extreme. Very extreme. Easy. Easy to know end point. The end point is when you stop adding you stop adding your titrant. Yeah. Easy to tell it's acid alkali. Yes, thank you, Ruby. It's clear. Spot on. Has just two colors. Yes, well done, Kieran. It is easy because it also has only two colors. Correct. But it's an extreme uh, color change is very extreme. Easy to know end point. Easy to know when you need to stop. Yes, well done to both of you. That's great. Yeah, it's very easy to see. Two marks that are GCSE. So methyl orange. Methyl orange is a bit of a nightmare. Three colors. Red. Red. Mm. I'm going to do it. Do it. Methyl orange is red in what? It is orange. Orange. You guys are going, I don't get what he's done there. He's just avoided something. Why has he done that? And yellow in. Okay, guys, remember, use your universal indicator knowledge to be able to give. Yeah, well done to Ruby. Smashed it. Yeah, universal indicator is really handy here. Red in acid. Yeah, yellow in alkali, yellow in alkali, and it is neutral when it's orange. Yeah, I shouldn't actually say, I should just say end point is orange when, when it's crossing over that boundary. This is a much harder indicator. Yeah, I'll, I'll actually put, I'll put neutral, why not? Yeah, it's a much harder indicator to use, yeah. So if this, if this indicator isn't as good as phenol phthalene, why would we ever use it? Question, when would I choose methyl orange? And there is an answer, one answer. when a weak base is being used. The only one that has ever appeared at GCSE, e.g. sodium carbonate. Sodium carbonate aqueous. You could argue as well, sodium hydrogen carbonate solution as well, yeah. Any other weak bases? Ammonia, it's a weak base. Ammonia aqueous, yeah. All of these, you cannot use phenol because you can see the neutral. No, it's actually really, really hard, Ashley. The orange color is one drop. If you add too much, it goes yellow and you miss it. It's a very difficult indicator to use methyl orange. Although I kind of prefer it because you know if you get it right, <laughs> but it is challenging. So you can't use, yeah, with these guys, can't use phenolphthalein. Can't use it. Now, I'm just going to quickly explain why, and you're not going to like, uh, hang on, before I do that. Right, guys, those are the only indicators you need to know at GCSE titrations, but I am now going to mention indicator number three, universal. Ah, uh, if I'm gonna do it. Uh, 
Some new one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. Universal indicator. Check that out. So this, the question you get at GCSE, yeah? Why can't you use, why can't you use UI in titration? Answer? is in my diagram. Any ideas? It's a two mark question at GCSE. Two mark questions. We can never, ever, ever use universal indicator. This ought to be in my learning objectives. Yeah, titration method, no indicators. I'll update it. There we go. Why can't you use universal indicator? Multiple, too much of a range in color and pH. is It's kind of true, Ruby, yes, not bad. It's a good answer. Multiple color changes. which means multiple greens. So no clear endpoint. You don't know when to stop. That's why multiple colleges, multiple color changes, multiple greens, so no clear endpoint. You don't know when to stop because in reality, you know, the greens aren't a solid green. What happens is you go, you actually get all these greens. You get a, a light green followed by a darker green. Yeah, followed by more colors, followed by a really dark green. It's stupid. So you can't do it because you don't know when to stop. Yeah. So you can never, ever, ever use universal indicator. Okay, the next bit, you only, so this is a nota bene, nota bene, should do it in red. Nota bene, you only use three drops of indicator. Why? Why only use three drops? Suddenly realize my laptop is running on battery. Probably ought to plug it in. Does it affect the results? Yes, it does. Cause science, nice Anch. Anch, you're in year 11, you're meant to know this answer. I've taught you this Anch. It's good to see you dude. It's good to see you. So we only use three drops of indicator. It does affect the result Ruby, you're absolutely right. Yeah, because excess brings anomalies. No, it's no, you need more detail on that. We only use three drops of indicator because indicators, indicators are reacting, underline, are reacting with 
acid stroke base in mixture. So would alter uh, titration value. Are they making it bigger or smaller? Yeah, but you're asking them, not me. <laughs> Murdo's here as well. I am also here, that's so funny. Just joining my year 10 lessons, that's brilliant. More than welcome to, guys. Yeah, by the way, it's because our indicators, by the way, are themselves acids and bases. In fact, they can actually behave as both. It's a bit of a nightmare. Um, we've got to look at your, your titration graphs. Um, you know, before I do this, let's do the method. Right, now we've done our indicators, we can tick that off. Let's do method. So the titration method is asked most years, yeah? And the titration method is, I'm gonna say six marks. It's actually not usually that many, it can vary between four and six. So it's usually about five, yeah? Titration method is six marks. So if we look at some of the homeworks that people have done, and some of these are great, let's, let's actually pull out one of them. There's Andy's. I was just looking at Andy's earlier, which was lovely. Well done, Andy. It was really good. Yeah, uh, this is where I can't get back to the classroom. Oh, no. Um, I don't know how to get back to the classroom. Uh, it's going to take me right out in it. No, it's there. It's there. I found it. Right. Let's go for, let's go for Ruse. Love it. Thanks, Rue, for just submitting it. Thanks very much. <laughs> right. So I think everyone can immediately see the problem. The problem is this is six marks max at GCSE, and you cannot write all of that. Would everyone agree? Yeah. Oh, Andy, you're so welcome. I was really, really pleased with it. Yeah. One of the notes I'm gonna put though is it would have been lovely to have seen a diagram if you could have just like either sketched one or, yeah, but otherwise I was really pleased. Everyone's done such a great job, I'm really happy. Uh, ben wrote 23 steps, <laughs> that's amazing. So guys, here's the lovely bit. What we now need to do is figure out which ones are gonna be worth the marks in the exam. So, okay, are we ready? No, stop it computer! So, sorry, I didn't mean to scream like a girl. Oh, let me do stuff. Oh, I don't want to write a comment. Oh, it's killing me. It's killing me, folks. Oh, my God. This is crazy. Why won't it? Guys, help, help. It's ah, ah. <laughs> I just want to, I just want to see it. Oh, full screen snip. Oh, oh, snip, 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 snip. It's all right, I've got this, guys. I've got it. Yeah, boom. Like it. I separated it into preparation steps, and I totally get that. Actually, it's great, it's fine. Because remember, this is this is why whenever you do a research exercise like this, this is why, I mean, I, I don't commonly do them, you guys know that. Um, but what it means is, it means that I then have to make sure that I go down, I broke down while trying to memorize all of them. No, no, Ben. That was why I've done this immediately the day later to make sure that you're not having to learn all of these. Don't worry. Let's figure out the ones we've got to have. Yeah? Okay. Rinse the burette with deionized water. Can I just point out, uh, was that done in the video? Did he wash his burette with it? With That's wrong. You never, the, oh my goodness, guys. Don't, if it's, if it's on the, no, 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 it's probably on the, is it on the, then the guy's made a mistake. The guy's an idiot. I shouldn't say that, it's really mean. Uh, guys, you never, the only thing, the only thing that's ever allowed to touch water is the conical flask. Nothing else can touch water. You have to rinse, you technically, you rinse burette with solution Solution going into, into burette. Oh, yeah, rinse with water, then titrant. Yes, but we'd skip the water stage. Skip that. 
Vince with the Titrand. Yeah, isn't he a professor at university? Yeah, he is. Yeah. It, it's just because you never do distilled water because it dilutes stuff. It'll change the concentration. You, ca you can't do that. Because imagine this. Here's what happens if you do that step. You've got a, this is the inside of the burette. Yeah, this is the burette. Um, I'll actually draw a full one like this. There you go. Now, let's, let's say it's dirty and it's got dirt in it. Yeah, and you need to rinse it. You always need to rinse it. Leftover acid or base. Right, so here's the thing. If you rinse with deionized water, yeah, what happens is all you do is replace these with water, uh, water droplets. If you did that, you'd have to dry it. Can't dry a burette. And then what you've got to do is you then have to then, secondly, rinse with the titrant, yeah, the solution going in it. But then when you rinse with that one, you're going to change the concentration of the titrant in the mixture. It's not allowed to touch water. What you do is you rinse with the titrant only. You shouldn't use water anywhere except when you're rinsing a conical flask. It's the only place where you can do that. Okay. But by the way, not needed at GCSE. The vid betrayed us. That's really interesting. You know what that means, guys? I need your help. I need to make the videos of these practicals and I need somebody to be the cameraman, somebody to be the uh, sound guy, and then I need an editor. Yeah, I'll, I'll put you as a, as, as a mention in the video. Wait, then won't there be leftover acid in the titrant? Leftover acid in the titrant. Uh, le well, it depends what the titrant is, Ashley. You, you'd rinse with whatever titrant is going. Are you talking about in the conical flask? Oh, let's keep going. The position of the burette vertically, not needed. Fill the burette to the top with titrant. Right, that there's the first, well, there's the first mark. There's step number one. Fill the burette with the known solution. Yeah, using a, using a funnel. Yeah, so that's the first step at GCSE. There's your first mark. Let's write this down. Yeah, titration. Method, step number one, yeah, fill burette, fill burette with known acid or base, whichever one it's going to be, yeah, acid stroke base, depending on which one they give you in the question, yeah, using funnel. Okay. Let's see how long it takes to take away. And then check for bubbles at the top. Well done. This is much more A-level, by the way. Yeah. Place conical flask. Oh, he missed a step. He's missed a step. Yeah. You, you've done it later on in step. You'd still get the mark at GCSE, just so you know. But step two, take initial reading. Ah! Take what do I have a lesson after this? I'm suddenly realizing what time this is going to end. Okay, still got enough time. Still got enough time. Take initial reading. By the way, just to mention to this, yeah, to read a burette, yeah, to read a burette, you always read um, top down. I know that seems weird because this is zero. And then were one, yeah, and then two, yeah, you read top down. So if that was our line, yeah, you actually read from the bottom of the meniscus. The water is curved, yeah, this is where a ruler would be really handy. I do actually have one. Yeah, you always read, this is your eye here. There's your eye. And you're reading, <laughs> I didn't do that very well, did I? Yeah, there's your eye. And you're reading from the bottom. The water forms this curve called a meniscus. Yeah, it's called a meniscus. Yeah, and you always read from the bottom of it. Yeah. And all the readings are x, x, point, X, 
zero or x x point x five the last number yeah the second decimal place yeah second decimal place is a zero or five because it's either on the line yeah it is either on the line or in between the line yeah it's in between now you can't tell how far in between so it always gains a five in the second decimal place okay so there's the take initial reading Okay, step number three. Okay, next, place conical flask below open end, remove, stop, hang on, check for bubbles, empty and rinse conical flask. Where, where's your, where, where, where have you, where is, Boo? Where's your pipette? Oh, hang on a minute. Empty and rinse conical, record the volume. I'm with you, you're getting rid of the air bubble in the bottom. Okay, using volumetric pipette. Yeah, it's not called a volumetric pipette. Yeah, step nine, you're absolutely right. It's called a graduated pipette. Yeah, step three, using a graduated, by the way, gra that means it's a super smart pipette. It's just come out of university. Yeah, it's just graduated. Yeah, it's got a it's got an undergraduate degree in acid-based titrations. That's what it's good at. Let's <laughs> see what it did there. <laughs> like graduate. Yeah, no. Using a graduated pipette, add 25 centimeters cubed of unknown solution. Brackets. Tie trend to the conical flask. Yeah. Known solution using a graduate of pet, add 25 on in solution to conical flask. To conical flask. There we go. Okay. Next. So Two marks gained so far, gained one. I know you're gonna wonder why you haven't gained one for number two. It's because you can't get that mark until you do the final reading and then you get those two as a combined. I want to throw the video in the trash. No, it's, they lied to us again. That's really funny. Um, in what way did they lie to you again? No, because all your steps are correct. You know, these are all good. I'm gonna show you the, uh, I'm gonna do the, wait, Mr. Duncan. Uh, does it have to be 25? No, Ben, it depends on the size of the pipette. The answer is, but 25 is the one that you're going to see at GCSE. Great question. You can actually get, they say volumetric pipette. Yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah, I totally get that. It's a fixed volume pipette. Sure. They said volumetric. Okay. It's actually a graduated pipette. Uh, I think you could probably call it a volumetric if you like. At GCSE, they just allow you to call it a pipette, which annoys me so much. I, I, I didn't say anything. Uh, it is because they're American. Yes, it is. That's correct. So using a graduated pet, add 25. Okay, next, add indicator. Spot on. So he's gained his marks, by the way. These are good. Uh, but he loses the indicator mark. Yeah, because he hasn't said how much. Yeah. Step number four. Add three drops of indicator. It will either be phenolphthalein most likely or methyl orange if you see a weak base yeah add three drops of indicator to conical i like it tick okay now that everything's in there now you don't actually need to mention the white tile yet but it's nice that people have used it you need the white piece of paper or a white tile to make the color change more easily seen that's not in the method but it's a separate question yeah nota bene Nota bene, white tile, white tile under conical, under conical makes color change, color change easier to see. 
more accurate endpoint. More accurate endpoint. The endpoint is the point at which it, the color change is permanent and you stop. Yeah. So now that we've added the indicator uh, to the conical flask, step number five. So we're going to add, yeah, add titrant. <laughs> See what I've done? It's a little, it's a burette. Look at it. Titrant. Add titrant from burette to conical. To canical? To conical flask. Quickly, quickly at first. Quickly at first. Then drop by drop near end point. So you're going to add it really quickly. Then when you start to see the color change, yeah, you slow down. And then you go to drop by drop. Yeah. Now, unfortunately, there was usually a mark for this, which is swirling mixture constantly. There usually is constantly. Uh, there usually is a mark for that somewhere, or it's asked separately, and I keep always missing it. Yeah, because you're meant to swirl while you're doing this. You'd be doing this in a practical in school if we were in school. Right. Now, our last mark, six. Yeah. Stop at permanent, permanent color change. Take final reading. Take final reading. Yeah. So you can see that it's, there's, yeah, that there's your six marks. Yeah, there's your six marks. I'm also very aware that we also need one more, another couple of bits, which is we repeat. Yeah, eight. Repeat until... Repeat until con con core dunt results achieved. Repeat until you can actually just put concordance. Hmm. Who named an indicator? Who names an indicator phenol failing? I know, right, Anch? Do you want to see what phenol phenylene looks like? I always love drawing out phenol phenylene. I get it wrong pretty much every time. This is what phenol phenylene looks like. I think I've already got it wrong. I think I've already made a mistake. Oh no. There's another there's another ring here somewhere. Oh nuts. Um I love trying to draw out phenol phalein. Oh no! That then comes off there, maybe. I'm just bored. And then there's another one that, like, oh, there's a funny little ring bit in the middle somewhere. Oh, I've mucked it up, stuffed it up. Oh, and then there's like another benzene attached here or something like that. It's something like this. And then there's a an oxygen in here somewhere. No, not there. There's like an oxygen here. I don't know. It's really cool though. Uh, and that bit there, by the way, is called phenol. It's a phenol group. It's where phenol comes from. I'm gonna. I've got it wrong. Phenol phenol can be synthesized by phthalic. And a hydride and two equivalents of phenol under acidic conditions, hence the name. Look at that. Do you want to see what phenol phenol looks like to see how far I got it wrong? I feel like I should now that I've done that. I'm an idiot. I shouldn't have done that. Shouldn't try and draw something if I can't draw it. Wow. 
Made a mess of that. Oh, so close. So close. So very close. There's an X in the middle. That's the way to do it. It's an X in the middle. Yeah. So these two were joined directly together. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. I'll, I'll stop doing I'll stop talking about it. I'll get rid of all this junk. Didn't even do it anyway. So I now need to just tell you what concordance is. Yeah, concordance. So when you repeat this, I'm actually going to draw out a, a titration table for you guys. You actually ought to learn this one. So we've got in, we've got, and, and, and you're going to hate this table as well. This is a titration, titration results. Yeah, titration results. So we've got final vol in centimeters cubed. And yes, final vol goes first. Isn't that weird? Initial vol. It makes the maths easier. It's really weird. Centimeters cubed. Yeah, and then you have rough. Then you have a rough titration, which you do really quick. Then you have a one, and then you have a repeat two, and a repeat three. So the rough is always deemed an overshoot. Yeah, you always add this, this, the rough one. Yeah, when they add it, I just want the lines to be similar lengths. Oh, I can't, I'm really not doing well here. There we go. So if we look at the initial volume for the rough was... I'm tempted to just be really naughty and go, let's go for naught, point, naught, naught. Yeah, you shouldn't, by the way, I'll teach you at A level, you never, ever, 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 ever do that. If you ever see that, it's wrong. If you ever see that, you've not done a good titration. And let's say I got 21.35. Yeah, so now I can work out the, um, the t this is called the titer. Column number, this one here is called titer. And that is the difference in vol. Yeah. So in this case, you do this minus the top one minus the bottom one, so 23.35. This will be an overshoot. Yeah, it will have gone totally pink, right? Barbie pink, as I call it. Yeah, that's an overshoot. Because it was a rough, it's your first one, you're never going to get an accurate number. The next one, you were going to start off at 2.35, yeah? And then I'm going to do it, do it again, and this time I'm going to get uh, 21, no, let's go for... 22.60 minus one from the other. Yeah, that's minus one from the other. So 22.60 minus 2.35, and I get a volume of 20.25. That's much better. Yeah, much better. Next, let's do another one. Does it again, starting off at 3.50. Yeah, I'm being sneaky now, folks. Um, okay, and we go to 23.40. So the difference between those two is 23.40 minus 3.50, 19.9. I'm getting better and better as we go along. I'm adding less and less. But the thing is, I can't stop yet. So what does concordant mean? I'll show you three. Twenty three point zero zero. So twenty three minus three point three and I get nineteen point seven. I am finally done. These two are within within naught point two centimeters cubed of each other, of each other. These are said to be concordant. Concordant. Concordant results. And I can now stop. Yeah, stop, no need to do another one. I've hit concordance. I've been good enough. Yeah, within point two. And then what you do, of course, is you calculate the average of those two. Yeah, you always discard everyone else. Discard everyone else because these are deemed overshoots. You don't want to use an overshoot in the average. Madness. So that's the end of titrations. Yeah, which is awesome. So all the points are there, and you've done a really good job of this, and I love the extra detail. I really, really do. 
Uh, just to let you know, when you get to, so GCSE, they deem concordance 0.2. Yeah, when you get to A level, it's 0.1, bit of a step up. It's because you have to do a practical and get that number. And it's hard, it's really tough. Right, guys, that brings us to the end of the lesson. I just want to check my learning objectives before I run off. Yeah. Common problems. Mm, haven't done common problems. Mm. I'm not going to bother with common problems today. We've had a full lesson anyway, and I'm very aware of it. Hey, guys. Right, guys, I'm going to leave you guys be. Go and have a nice break time. I will post on the classroom um, some titration questions if you like. Happy, can, can. Uh, your test, you know, is coming. Yeah, I hope you can use the document. You know where all the documents are, folks. Yeah, it's all on that support sheet. Everything is there that you need, everything. Yeah, our next lesson is next Wednesday, and you have a test. I'll see you guys then. You'll be fine. You guys have smashed the homeworks. You're going to destroy this test. You will have done great. Don't worry. I'm not. Guys, go and have a nice... Wait, when is it though? Mr. Duncan, the support sheet isn't updated for us because ours is a copy. Huh? Wait, what? What? The support sheet. You guys should test us next Wednesday. On what? Acid, base, and salt. Guys, I've done this with you already. Uh, just a reminder. Just a quick reminder. Everything the test will destroy us. No, it won't. You're going to smash this room. Yeah. So, like, my SSP sheet is last updated in January. Yeah, that's probably about right, Ashley. I don't need to update the support sheet. Yeah, these support sheets... Uh, everything that you need to use. Oh, A level? No. We want GCSE support sheet. <laughs> everything you need to do. So any stuff you added later isn't there. No, this is this is the updated one. This is the one that's up, up to date. And you guys need to be looking at 18 and 19. You guys need to be looking at 18 and 19, folks. Acid, acid alkali titrations and acid base and salt preps. You've got six booklets of questions there, folks. Six booklets of questions. Loads of them. Ah, you guys aren't seeing my, if I just share my screen again. Guys, just going back to this. Yeah. Though this is the booklet you know, year 11, support and tracking sheet complete and you have got eight columns uh, periods 18 and 19 you need to do all of these booklets all of these guys those are your revision yeah everything you need is there if you need any help give me a shout on uh, uh google hangouts and i'll always be able to answer your questions give me a message anytime you know i'll always support guys it's been a great lesson thanks for coming along it's been a full hour i'm sorry I apologize sincerely, but titration's done. We're finished. We're not only finished with the year 10 content, but technically that's the end of acid base altogether, which is kind of nice. Uh, you'd usually have three lessons of practicals after this. So when we go back to school, as soon as we do, you guys are going to be doing titrations just for fun. Guys, have a great day. See you later. Have a good weekend. Study hard. And you're very welcome. Always. <laughs>